Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel, and thank you for joining us on another episode of our vlog where we discuss grooming industry subjects for aspiring groomers and pet lovers, people who are working with their pet at home and want to know more about the industry. Today's subject is a very important one because we're going to be talking about staining on pets. Uh, this is something that groomers get asked about a lot uh, when working, especially with white and light colored pets. Uh, and of course, the most common one that we can talk about and we will be talking about is the tear stains around some white and light colored breeds. So we are going to delve into the types of staining that you typically see on our white and light colored pets. We're going to talk about what it is and where it comes from. And then we're going to be talking about mitigating strategies. We're going to be really, really realistic about what a groomer can do in the span of an appointment, uh, what owners need to be trained to do, um, and discuss what they need to do in terms of mitigating strategies. But the most important thing that we need to understand about staining is that staining is sometimes sending us a message. So it may not just be an unsightly uh, cosmetic thing. There may be something else going on. So let's really jump in, talk about pet staining and what we need to do about it. So I'm going to split up uh, the different types of tear stains. I'm going to kind of color code it for you. Uh, these are the most general and common ones that we see out there in the field. So the first one is a rusty kind of rust brown color. And this is where you're going to see the tear stains under the eyes, around the mouth, right? Sometimes around the paws, around the privates, and then other parts of the body. So we are going to dump, jump in and talk about what those rust and brown color stains are. And then we've got the very obvious yellow stains. Uh, so you will see yellow stains. I'm going to kind of give it away. Of course, that is urine stains uh, that's stained into the coat. Um, and this you'll see on white or light colored dogs, especially if they have some incontinence issues um, or if they have bad um, legs and they can't walk very well. So they may be sitting in their urine and that can actually cause staining that you'll see a yellow staining on that fur. So let's talk about the rusty brown staining. So where does it come from and what may it mean? Not only is it more visible because it's really a lot of times affecting the face, but this is the type of staining that may give us, us an indication of something else that may be going on with your pet. So in pets' bodily fluids, including their tears, right, and also their saliva, there is a substance called porphyrins, um, basically that are uh, waste products, natural waste products that contain iron, magnesium, other minerals that when they touch the air, they can oxidize and cause this reddish brown staining. So why is it that some pets get this and some pets don't? And now here's where the messages may be being sent to us. For the most part, when you see tear stains um, happening on a dog's face, it is an overproduction of tears. And that overproduction of tears with the porphyrins in it, right, those oxidizing minerals, um, if they are profuse, right, and really have a lot of time to sit on a pet's face, this is where you're going to see that extreme tear stain. So now what are the concerns about overproduction of tears? This can be because of a few medical reasons. So you do need to go um, either tell your clients to see a vet or for uh, pet lovers working with their pets at home. You do want to make sure that you rule out some things that your vet's going to help you rule out before you focus on the cosmetic portion of the tear stains. Some of the common issues that we do see out there are allergies. So that overproduction of tears can be because of environmental allergies, um, something that is causing the dog to have this reaction and to overproduce those tears. Another reason can be an infection. So you can have a bacterial infection. Uh, something can be going on um, on the skin there. And the more moist it stays, right? Bacteria loves a moist environment. The more that bacteria can fester and grow. Um, so make sure that if you see staining, make sure you see your vet um, or tell your clients to go see the vet to el eliminate the fact that it may be an infection. And then, of course, there are genetic reasons. It could just be the structure of the eye and the tear duct. Um, so make sure, again, uh, if you're, you have a client that has a dog with overproducing tears, make sure you push them in the right direction to go see a vet to rule out some of these health concerns. 
So now that we know a little more about uh, the tear staining, what about the staining around the mouth and other places of a dog? Well, I told you that those porphyrins are also in saliva, and that's what you see with those light or white colored dogs when they have discoloration around their mouth. You'll also see sometimes with Westies, you have to kind of lift the flu and Maltese's, is that you'll see where that drool, right, collects and the saliva collects on their bottom lip, that ridge. You'll see sometimes these lines of discoloration going down. That's just where they're drooling more, right? And that's where that porphyrin infused drool is sitting on their coat. So now we have the tear stains. We know where the mouth stains come from. What about the stains on the feet or on the privates or on other parts of the body? Well, it all comes down to, and this is the message that the staining does provide us, is that it all comes down to where your dog is chewing. Okay, so if you see stains around their feet, okay, and you're going to see only see this with your light-colored pets, um, that may mean something is going on. And I will tell you this, as someone who had a dog with uh, toe cancer this last year, um, is that my dog Rosie started chewing on her foot, um, and she's black, so it didn't stain or anything like that, but it was an indicator that something was going on. On with her so um, if you see staining around your pets feet that means that they're chewing on him right the saliva is getting on those feet and there may be something that you need to look into uh, to solve that problem and then the same logic applies to uh, any other staining, especially around the privates. Let's talk about the rear end. If you see uh, your dog chewing on uh, their rear end, uh, this may be an indication that something is going on back there that's irritating them. Maybe they have uh, impacted anal gland or they just need their anal glands expressed, uh, something simpler like that. Um, so make sure that you pay attention to where your dog is chewing and to see if there's a problem that is surrounding that. And of course, any places on the body uh, that you see is discolored from that saliva, make sure you pay special attention because that's also a message. There could be something embedded in the skin. Um, there could be a bite. There can be something that you want to pay attention to or you want to make sure um, as groomers that you tell your clients to pay attention to if they have discoloration at a particular part of their body. It, there may be an irritant, uh, something going on or an infection and the, uh, the discoloration and the dog's saliva is kind of pointing you right to it. Okay, so now that we know what kind of staining uh, is common on our pets and we know where it comes from, let's jump in and talk about mitigating strategies. So from a grooming standpoint, we get asked all the time, can you do something about fluffy staining uh, in front of their face? Now here is the secret, is that a groomer is going to be able to do some things cosmetically to minimize that staining. We're going to talk about that in a second. But really the onus of making sure that that staining is handled is going to be done at home by the owner. So it's kind of like a two-factor thing is that the groomer is going to help with some of the cosmetics of it and then the owner has to maintain that at home. But just as a reminder that before you go into cosmetic handling of staining, make sure that all the health issues have been looked at to make sure that nothing is exacerbating or really creating that situation that needs to be handled by a veterinarian. So as a groomer or a pet owner, there are a lot of products out there that claim that they can clean uh, eye stains or staining on pets uh, anywhere on their body. Um, and there are also things called optical brighteners, uh, so whitening and purpling shampoos um, that can be used to address staining in certain parts. But the thing that I want to make very, very clear is that there is no overnight solution that I have found. And I will put that challenge out there uh, if anyone is listening to this and they know of a tear stain product that is safe and effective in one time use or even a two time use, please put that down in the comments below. I would be very interested. But in terms of products, everything that I've seen, whether it's a tear stain remover, right? You have uh, pads, you have liquids, you have powders, different types of things that are out there on the market for you uh, to remove tear stains and also shampoos and face washes that contain natural optical brighteners that groomers employ. Um, still, it's not going to be an immediate effect. Some of the optical brightening is going to give an illusion and cut down some of that yellowing or some of that reddishness um, of the coat. But in terms of actually dealing with the solution and cleaning up pet stains, I have seen that the only products that work, even the best products out there, are ones that you have to use on a repeated and daily basis.
So I will put down in the description below um, some of the brightening and optical brightening uh, shampoos that I use uh, that are natural, that are great to brighten a coat. And again, you got to be very careful when working around the face. And when you're working around the face and you have anything with optical brighteners in it, you want to make sure, obviously, not to get it into the dog's eyes or the pet's eyes. Um, and you want to make sure that that is face safe. Uh, so make sure you read the label and only use something that is safe to use around a pet's face, around a pet's face. And let me kind of close with the most obvious mitigating strategy that groomers can do. We can remove that staining by scissoring or clippering it off. Uh, and that is what we do. Now, in terms of eye staining and mouth staining, actually removing that coat. And with the eyes, I don't really go, go very short. I will leave some coat, but I will make sure that this is nice and cleaned up because not only will it prevent that moisture from staying, it will also prevent it a bacteria from uh, finding a way of festering in that wetness. Uh, so keeping the eye area short and then around the mouth, if you notice with mouth staining for your light and white colored dogs you'll see it's all that hair that goes into their mouth so usually what groomers will do is we'll pull out that coat and then scissor around that mouth which will give a much cleaner appearance and you'll see that same thing applied to our privates uh, that when we do a sanitary cut as groomers we're going to be taking a lot of that uh, staining away just again remember that if you do see a lot of staining around your pet's privates they may be telling you that they're licking and there may be a bigger problem well, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining this discussion on pet staining. Again, I really am serious about that challenge. If you guys want to share your products that have worked uh, for pet stains, I am definitely uh, want to hear about it. Definitely open to trying it out. Um, what you'll see also in your search out there, I kind of wanted to put it in our closing because I don't want to make it official, is that I have talked to clients through the years, and some of the things that they say is to use filtered water, and that sometimes helps um, not to have that iron a high iron content in the water so just be aware of that i'm not sure if that works or not i've seen people kind of say it does and then i've seen it not work for others so be aware that that exists i've also seen some uh crazy ideas of um don't use plastic bowls uh for your pet's food and water use stainless steel or ceramic and some people swear that they've gotten rid of their tear stains that way so there's a lot of kind of i don't want to say old wives tales but a lot of holistic approaches that people take some apple cider vinegar in the water um, so definitely look around, um, but know that in terms of the products that you want to use to brighten, make sure that they're natural, uh, make sure that you're not using anything with bleach or any harsh chemicals. You don't want to have anything in a pet's eye that can cause them damage, um, but you definitely have mitigating strategies that can help. We just need to set the expectation as groomers with our clients that if they're not taking care of the pet's eyes on a regular basis, that we are only going to be able to do those snipping and cutting mitigating strategies some optical brighteners with our shampoos and our products but that's pretty much uh, where what we can do because we don't see those pets every day guys if you like this video we really appreciate your thumbs up thank you for subscribing thanks for your comments uh, and anything you need to add down below we are listening we appreciate your time we will see you soon